Welcome back folks, I'm Frizz and today I would like to talk about the Thaumaturge class for Pathfinder 2e that is going to be released later this year in the Dark Archive. So why exactly do I want to talk about it? Well, the Thaumaturge is going to be treading new thematic ground for Pathfinder 2e and that is incredibly exciting as the Thaumaturge is not based off of any Pathfinder 1e class and it's just super cool. So in this video I'd like to talk about why exactly you should be excited for this class. Or at the very least, I'd like to talk about why, why exactly I am so stoked. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So what exactly does make a Thaumaturge so special? Well, they are a charisma-based martial class that uses esoteric materials and their sheer charisma to gaslight the world into thinking that their attacks are more deadly than they actually are. So. <laughs> That sounds weird, I know, and it is, but just to use an example, a Thaumaturge can attach a broken chain to their weapon to make it deal more damage to slavers, as obviously slavers should take more damage to that due to the sheer symbolism. Another example that I think is just hilarious is a Thaumaturge licking their blade to make it more deadly to werewolves because they have a silver tongue. Symbolism is incredibly important to Thaumaturges, and yeah, that's the core of the class right there. But if that doesn't really go up your alley, the Thaumaturge has more to come. See, the Thaumaturge, whenever it's released, will have nine different types of implements that can give passive, defensive, and reactive, just all kinds of bonuses. And each one of these is a symbol that is used in society that people generally associate with particular feelings and methodologies. And this could be something like a weapon can symbolize destruction and being incredibly blunt and to the point, while a lantern can be used to illuminate the truth about reality. Now that I've actually talked a little bit about what the Thaumaturge even is, why should you actually be excited about it? And well, okay, so one big gripe that people had about the Thaumaturge during the playtest was that its core mechanic find flaws was tied to recall knowledge and if you are aware at all of how people talk about pathfinder 2e on the internet you'll know that recall knowledge is generally a very vague rule on 2e which is a little bit unusual and a core mechanic for a glass being tied to that is a little bit problematic because it makes it a little bit more difficult for you to actually use this in your games and thankfully Paizo has reached out and said during their playtest post-analysis that they're going to be changing that, and now Find Flaws is going to be something unique. And that is why I think that I'm so excited for the Thaumaturge to finally be released, is because it was a fun, workable class from the playtest. It was a full class that I would be happy if it was released. And Paizo said, okay, yeah, that's good. Now we're going to take your advice and we're going to make it something great. And that is really the reason why I'm so excited for this is because Pizza does great work and they already had a working product during the playtest and they're going to make it even better, which is fantastic. When I say that the Thaumaturge was cool in the playtest, I really do mean it. See, let's just take some feats as an example of what it is exactly that a Thaumaturge could do in the playtest. So let's just talk about the Binding Oath feat and also the Root to Life feat. Binding Oath. So Binding Oath allows for a Thaumaturge to say words, say a promise, and then genuinely bind themselves by the words of that agreement. They say, I will not hurt you and I am not trying to barter you down to a price that would be bad for you. And then they literally cannot make that oath if they are lying. And also anyone that hears them, no matter even if they understand the language, knows that they are telling the truth. Now, obviously, this will <laughs> give some gameplay mechanics, as you can use this to try and... Uh, you know, convince someone that you're honest and truthful, or intimidate the hell out of someone by saying, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to kill you, and then, you know, make that oath binding. But it's just a super fun feat that is really useful for a charisma-based class, and I just love it. Now, 
Route to Life, on the other hand, is a little bit more combat oriented. See, Route to Life allows for you to spend an action to place a plant onto a dying creature's corpse, or soon to be corpse, and it then stabilizes. This allows for you to spend one action to guarantee stabilize an ally. See, a lot of cultures tie life and death to certain plants that could be used medically or just have some kind of cultural significance, and a thaumaturge sees that connection and says, huh, well people seem to think that this is the way that things work, which means that they actually do kind of work like that, simply through that belief that people have. There is a perception about how the world works, and I can now use and abuse it to my benefit. But that's not all, because that's not entirely where those kind of symbolisms and connections end. See, a thaumaturge can instead spend two actions to place a flower on their friend's corpse, and also give their friend a chance to remove any persistent damage that they're taking with increased aid, so it's only a DC 10 to remove any damage that they're taking, which is amazing. It's just a cool, fun feat that is certainly going to come up because, yeah, characters are going to go unconscious a lot. And what else is the best part? The best part about both of these two feats, they're level one feats. Now, normally, to get the really cool feats from certain archetypes and certain classes, you have to get to the high levels. Thaumaturge says no to that. You can get these really cool, really flavorful feats at level one. That's insane. There's a ton of cool feats at basically every single level from the Thaumaturge, and I'm just super excited to read through them all for whenever Dark Dive eventually comes out. Alright, so the last thing that I'd like to talk about the Thaumaturge, because it's honestly the thing that I'm most excited about, is the implements. See, implements are types of implements of power and just things that people symbolize for particular ideals and beliefs, and there's eventually going to be nine of them. We don't know what all of them are, but we do know what five of them are that were in the playtest. So let's go over them now. The playtest had the amulet. The amulet represented protection, both of yourself and others, and it basically gave you a champion-like ability to negate harm to other people, which is super cool. The next one was the chalice, which symbolizes, of course, a cup and people eating, drinking, healing, rest, and recovery, and represents, you guessed it, healing, and it gives you, gave you the ability to sit from it, to get temporary hit points, and to drink from it to heal yourself, and add some other really interesting abilities, which is a lot of fun and a great way to sustain yourself and allies. Now, the next one was the lantern. You would hold it aloft, and in its light, you would reveal truth. You would give a bonus of recall knowledge, you got a free check to see traps and secret doors, you could, even at higher levels, reveal invisible creatures because a lantern shines light, and in the shadows, whenever you shine light on them, you can find secrets. You can just find a secret because that is what light does. The next one is wands. Wands are symbolize, or really symbolize magic in pretty much every single, you know, society in Galarian where magic literally exists. So obviously, waving a wand around, even if you're not a spellcaster, should produce magic. And for a thaumaturge, it does, as you can just wave around a stick, and because you believe, or at least represent a wizard casting a spell through it, you can fling magic out at people and deal damage. Now that is an incredibly weird use for an ability, but it's super cool and allows for you to do damage at ranged. The final one is probably the most simple, and it's the weapon. The weapon is just, you take one of the most prominent symbols in basically every society, which is a weapon, and then you do what weapons do. You beat the shit out of people. It basically gives you an improved version of an attack of opportunity. And yeah, hear me out here, it is an improved version because it triggers on more things and can disrupt more things. It's just super fun, and of course a sword is going to cut better, because what else is a sword to do? Ultimately, I am super excited for the Thaumaturge, because it opens up so many character opportunities that you simply just haven't been able to do before. They, you might have been able to do them flavor-wise, but now you can actually have like a mechanical reason for doing it, and that sounds like so much fun. Like, let's say you start at level 1 as a weapon implement thaumaturge that found a sword from a famous, like, soldier from days gone by, 
and you use it because it was a famous soldier's sword, therefore that sword is more dangerous because someone who was dangerous used it. Makes absolutely no sense, but you can make it because you believe it makes sense and people think, oh yeah, of course, that sword is dangerous. That means the sword is now dangerous even if it technically isn't. That's a cool idea. Or for a character concept that is a little bit more out there than that, let's take a thaumaturge that believes that tropes from stories and that work their way into all types of mythologies represent actual parts of reality. A good example of this is the rule of three feet. Basically every single mythology in our reality has, is based around the rule of three and basically every story includes the rule of three. So what if there was a thaumaturge that thought, huh, that makes a lot of sense. Clearly, the rule of three is based on reality and is included in every story. Therefore, because the rule of three exists in our reality, we are in a story. And then they apply story-based tropes to how they perceive reality. So they are a character who thinks that they are a part of a story, which is, of course, true, very meta, and very, very weird. The occultist can just lead to all kinds of utterly insane character concepts, while also being a super just unique mechanical class and i'm just super excited guys i don't know if you could tell from my passionate ranting in this video but i am looking forward to the thaumaturge so so much thanks for watching i know i didn't cover everything in this video but i hope that it worked out fine regardless there is just so so much that i can cover when it comes to a class like the thaumaturge that it's really hard for me to decide what I actually want to keep into a video and what to not include. Ultimately, I just decided to talk about what made me the most excited for the Thaumaturge. Uh, regardless, what are you actually looking forward to about this class? There's a lot to it, and it honestly seems like it will become one of my favorite classes in the entire system, so I'm curious to see what you guys think. Regardless of all of that, though, until I see you next, live a wonderful life.